Good afternoon, everyone. We are coming to you live from the Hoth. Uh, my name is Bobby. That is Carl on the other screen. Give a wave, Carl. Uh, we'll do we'll do some more formal introductions here once we get started. But we're we're just coming on a few minutes early to let everyone trickle in here, get a seat, grab your popcorn, get your drinks ready because uh, it is going to be a great training we got for you guys today. Yeah, what's going on, everyone? Welcome, welcome. People are coming in, flooding on in here. Looks like we already got uh, 41 people ready to hear from you, Carl. Where's everyone watching from today? Here we go. Got uh, Carmel Valley, California, Detroit, Denver. Got got some everyone all over the place. Jody, did he say that right? Is it Carmel or Caramel? Oh. Let's hear the debate here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Emmanuel, hi, thank you for joining us. Harold from Florida. Harold, how'd you uh, fare with the storm? It, it passed through us last night. We're all doing pretty good in Tampa Bay over here. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, Jody came back. Ashwin, we're doing well. How about yourself? Let's see, Harold, ETA and still standing. Good. India, how's it going? James from Ohio. Thanks for tuning in, James. All right, we got over 50 people ready to go here. If you're just joining us again, we're on a little early. We'll get this party started in a couple yeah. minutes here. We're just letting everyone uh, trickle in here. We hope you're ready to learn all about PPC and how to drive some leads. I know Carl's going to get pumped. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a great time. Uh, we're going to be doing some questions and answers as we go. Uh, we're just going to go into different scenarios, all types of good stuff today. Carl, I don't know if you know this, but this is also a uh, another special day in the world. This is the first day of the Masters Golf Tournament. Do we have any uh, golf, golf yeah. fans out there? Anyone watch the Masters today? So uh, the old Tiger Woods is uh, in the hunt already. <laughs> Masters in November. Jordan's yeah. watching. <laughs> uh jody will this, will this apply for our white labeling the hawk services yes everything we'll be discussing can be white labeled already and, questions i love it <laughs> andrew with the patrick reed there i love it we're gonna make a special promo code just for you just because of that <laughs> all right already here in a few minutes Yes, another minute. We'll get it started here. Carl, how'd you fare with the uh, the storm yesterday? I know down you live in downtown. Did it flood at all in area? Uh, no, I'm like thirty or forty feet above water, uh, so I slept great. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, it was nothing. So uh, uh, we did get some like water coming over on the patio, but other than that, it was great. Yeah. So, yeah, we got a little. Yeah. We got a little wind. It was raining all day yesterday. We got a little wind in the uh, at around night. It picked up a little bit, but nothing too crazy. Yeah. So I'm glad it sounds like it didn't do too much. It's now up near uh, Georgia. Everyone up there is doing all right. All right. It is two o'clock here. Should we? Uh, should we get this thing started, Carl? Let's go. We got some first time attendees in the in the chat here. Very very excited about that. Um, very excited to get this going. Well, I'm going to do a quick introduction. I'm going to turn this over to Carl here. My name is Bobby Bishop. I'm the marketing manager here at the Hoff. Uh, I'm just hosting the event. Uh, I'm here to hype up Carl and introduce him here. Carl is our PPC man. He's been in the business for uh, five, six, seven, eight years. I don't know. You're a pro for a long, long time. You've worked with Shark Tank, uh, judges and investors in the past. You're the man. But he's been running our PPC product here. Um, for going on what two years now? Yep. Two years, crazy. two years and two days. Two years, two years and two days, and he's been getting some crazy results. So he's. I'm going to turn it over to Carl and uh, let him get this show on the road. I'm going to take my face off the screen here too, and uh, let you pull up your slides. Yeah. Well, welcome everyone. We pull up the slides here. Uh, All right. Awesome. Can uh, can everyone see my screen? Uh, I cannot, Carl. There we go. There we go. Yep. Now I can see it. Awesome. Awesome. Oh. 
All right, awesome. So welcome, welcome everyone. Once again, my name is Carl Bartling. I'm the PPC manager here at the Hoff. Uh, and this is the 2020 PPC case studies and what's working now with PPC. Uh, this is gonna be about, well, probably about 30 or 45 minutes of diving into everything. We welcome you all, welcome first timers. If this is your uh, first time at a, at a Hoff webinar, Hoff training, welcome everyone. And if, a, if you're a repeat offender, Welcome as well. You know, we're excited to have you here and and, um, and share our knowledge and share our findings and experiments and testing and processes with you guys. So welcome everyone, excited to have you here. Uh, we're gonna be diving into this and, and overall this is for you if you really wanna generate some consistent leads and sales using PPC without burning thousands in ad spend. I think that's one of the biggest things that most people come to us and they say, well, we've tried, we've tried PPC or we've tried other marketing uh, advertising vehicles in the past and we just burned a ton of money. Uh, you've been burned in the past or seen no results. Maybe you guys have done it yourselves or worked with other agencies. So we're actually gonna break down how we set you up for success uh, with different campaigns using Google Ads. And then ultimately you wanna see what is working for individuals in your same situation. Straight to the point, covering real business PPC case studies. Uh, and this Presentation is designed to show you real world scenarios. So I'll show you exactly how to run profitable campaigns that drive consistent leads. And we're gonna be diving in specifically on strategies you can take and implement immediately after this presentation. So during this presentation, we're gonna be covering a lot. We're gonna be going fast, but it's gonna be 30 to 45 minutes of pure training. And then if you have any questions, put them in the chat because Bobby's gonna be here. Uh, he's going to be tagging questions along the way. Uh, we'll be answering some questions as we go through each case study, and then there will be a Q&A at the end. So um, at the end, I'm going to actually show you where to get the slides. Once again, we're going to do about 30 minutes of Q&A. Plus, we're going to actually have a special deal for those who stick around to the very end. And my goal is really, really simple. I want to show you how real businesses are running wildly profitable campaigns and generating leads with Google Ads. Nothing, No fluff, You know, straight to the point. I just want to show you how people are generating leads consistently and ultimately getting a positive ROI. But why listen to me, right? Um, my name is once again Carl Bartling. I'm PPC manager here at the Hoff. I opened my first business when I was 17 and landed my first rock star client when I was 18. That was a fun one. I have over five years experience in paid traffic and full funnel build. So uh, besides just creating offers and customer avatars, you know, actually writing ad copy, building landing pages, building sales pages, and, and understanding how we acquire customers and, and make them pay on the back end and, and full things like that. Uh, now I help manage millions of dollars in ad spend for clients. I love my wife, cats, all things marketing, and motorcycles. They're truly my passion. And why the Hoth? You know, why do you guys join this webinar? Well, uh, you guys may know us as a SEO company. We've been doing SEO for, since 2010, so uh, just hit our 10-year anniversary there. And we started doing PPC just a little over a year and a half ago. We started offering that as a program. Uh, but we've been nominated by Inc. Magazine as the best workplaces. We've got Inc. 5000, uh, the Florida's fastest growing companies. Um, you guys may have seen us also at different events uh, throughout the years and the Hoth Monster, of course. Uh, plus, last year we actually received one of the biggest uh, partner badges through Google, which is a Google Certified Partner. We're proud to hold the prestigious title of being a Google Partner. Uh, basically, it means that we've demonstrated the Google Ad skills, expertise. We met Google's ad spend requirements, and we delivered company, agency, and client revenue growth and sustained and grown its client base. So basically, not only getting good results on Google, but actually sustaining those clients for long term. Um, inside of Google Ads. So enough about us, let's dive into these case studies. So inside of these case studies, it's all, everyone is all part of our Hoth PBC Manage program. We're gonna, take, we're gonna take over your ad account and do everything you need to get the results. Plus right now we have over 100 plus clients on this program. So I'm gonna show you what's working inside these case studies and how it can work for your business as well. So let's get a one in the chat if you guys are ready to go. Lots of ones. Awesome. Let's do this. Yep. Boom. <laughs> awesome. So the first case study, everyone, uh, this was how to turn around a failing campaign and drive hundreds of leads. So this case study is about a local auto dealership who was using another agency. They spent over 70,000 in ads, 
but our client really stated that they really didn't move the needle much for their business. I mean, could you guys imagine spending 70,000 in ads, but it really didn't do much of your business, you know, almost a complete waste there. And 70,000 in ads that just didn't work, we just knew something was up. So the first thing that we do with any client that comes across, across our desk and that's been running some ads, we always start with an audit. If you have past data, we can actually see what worked and what didn't. And if something smells a little funky, well, we'll really find it out and what it is and fix it ultimately. As you guys can see here, one of the big things is the conversion, which we're gonna talk about later. So from the audit, we found two big takeaways. One was a tracking issue, and tracking can be one of the most complex pieces of Google Ads or marketing as a whole. One small mistake can take you down the path of just misleading information. It must be set up properly to track proper leads and sales. Uh, I threw this little meme up, track advertising, that's impossible because tracking is very, very difficult. You know, one big piece that we do is actually test all tracking and preview it before even going live. So here's the big mistake we found with this case study was that they weren't actually counting leads. You guys can see here that their bulk amount of conversions um, was 5,891 conversions just viewing of a key page, meaning they were just viewing their inventory page and that was it. So somebody wasn't actually opting in or anything like that. Um, so when they were going to this key page where you guys can see here, um, you know, we didn't know where the leads were coming from. We, we didn't know if the ads are actually driving the calls, which ads are working, which keywords are working, and so on and so forth. Uh, it truly made it impossible to track if the ads are actually once again working and, and making that needle move for that business. So a lot, of common, a lot of common tracking conversion pieces that we look at is we want it when somebody actually takes an action. So form fills, phone calls, sales. We don't want page views or button clicks, things like that. Just because when somebody looks at maybe that inventory page, that doesn't mean anything. Somebody can look at the page and then bounce off. We want somebody who actually opted in, gave us a phone call, or actually made a sale. The next big one was that with the home page. So, um, you know, why you shouldn't use your home page as a destination. We found that they were driving all traffic directly to the home page. So it was going directly to this home page. Home pages are great. They're built to browse, but they're not really meant to capture leads. Plus, there are quite a bit of distracting elements that hurt conversions, right? When you land on this page, you might have been looking for, you know, used trucks or or used cars or used SUVs. And when you land here, you're just kind of all over the place. You don't know where to click. You still have to look for what you're looking for uh, when you initially search on Google. So how do we fix it? You probably all want to know is we fix it through proper tracking and landing pages. Very, very simple things, but they're the basics and need to get done. So here's how it works. We had our Google ad, it was a specific ad that was served on, based on the user search. So you can see used car dealerships. Then it went over to a landing page. Uh, the user clicks the landing page and fills out the form. And then they land on a confirmation page. Once they actually landed on that confirmation page, then a conversion is counted as a new form fail or a new lead in this case. Uh, very, very important there. And now this gives us the opportunity to actually understand how many leads are coming through and then we can see how many are actually going through and purchasing later down, down the road. So, but, so by combining some proper tracking and high converting landing pages, we know exactly what's going on. So the big strategy behind this one was that we research and plan campaigns around high intent keywords, meaning use cars, use car dealership near me. Uh, we pre-optimized the campaigns. We designed and implemented some high converting landing pages with proper tracking, and we launched the campaign and started optimization right away. And the results were astronomical. Right away, we saw that the campaign started driving hundreds of leads just from the beginning. We saw a nearly immediate results after implementing our strategy. Now they could see which leads came from where. That way they could actually justify their ad spend. Remember, they spent about 70,000 with a past agency, uh, and they didn't really see that needle moving at all. And most importantly, the phones started ringing and the leads started flowing. So this was very important for our client. Not only saw they could track the results, but they actually saw the immediate action of these new campaigns. Um, another big one that we do with Hoth PPC is our preliminary research. So everyone has clear expectations of what to expect right from the beginning. So our number of leads were possible were 337 uh, leads. 
And we actually came out after three months with a total of 752 leads, a mix of form fills and phone calls. So in 90 days, we smashed our lead generation goal. We built a full hands-off solution where they focused on selling cars and we focused on bringing, bringing the leads in the door. And we gave them a true and accurate data to understand and review with upper management. And ultimately, it saved them thousands in wasted ad spend and expensive agency fees. So major, major takeaways for everyone on this webinar is make sure you're tracking your setup properly and you're tracking the right things, not page views, not directions, um, you know, nothing like that. Use high converting landing pages to capture information, not your homepage. If I looked at someone's ad account today and they were not doing these two things, I would tell them to completely stop spending money on ads in general. Uh, optimize your campaigns over time based on data you collect to continuous continuously decrease your costs and increase your conversions. You know, it's not a set it and forget it. We want to continuously optimize. So I know we kind of went through that one pretty quick. Do you guys see how just a few elements made a huge difference? Let's get a yes in the chat. Awesome, awesome. Bobby, before we dive into case study number two, do we have any questions that, um, uh, any questions so far about case study number one? Yeah, we have one from uh, Andrew, right? Just sent it in. He goes, uh, he wondered if you had any info about their ROAS. He said you got them leads, um, but do you have any stats on the ROAS? I know that's kind of handled on the client side. Didn't know if you had any info there. Yeah, so um, with with everything right now, with the ROAS, that was, that was on the client, um, and it was just – you know, we, we focus on just generating the leads. Uh, we do not have the ROAS data to provide, unfortunately. Gotcha. Other than that, we're, uh, we are, oh, one second. Where do you place the landing page in the site directory from Fred? Fred, great question. We actually don't index the landing page at all. So we actually don't want Google to be crawling our, web, our landing page for SEO purposes. So we don't index our landing pages. These are strictly just for paid advertising. Perfect. Awesome. And uh, and one last one, just because I think this is relevant too, is uh, how are you tracking phone calls? Eric Nelson wants to know. Uh, that's a great question. So um, with with call extensions, meaning they call directly from the ad, there is built-in call tracking, uh, but now we are using a third-party application that we set everyone up to listen to the calls, pass along the call recordings, um, and then we tie that into Google Ads and Analytics. Perfect. All right, that is it for now. We'll let you uh, continue with number two here. All right, awesome. So case study number two was how we reduced the cost per lead by 90% plus in a highly competitive and expensive niche. Um, you know, when we think highly competitive, we think a lot of times we think about uh, medical we think attorney so this client is actually in the drug and rehab space which is one of the most competitive spaces in ppc uh, a little bit of background their average customer value is thirty thousand dollars so having a high cost per acquisition or cpa is still extremely profitable for them and they came to us to reduce their cost per acquisition and drive in consistent leads uh, daily for them so once again we started with with an audit um, and we saw conversions costing upwards of $23,000. I mean, this was just absurd, right? Can you imagine paying $23,000 just for a conversion? That's not even someone actually paying you. So that was a really, really big deal that we saw. Even you guys can see above the highlighted box, there was conversions coming in, eight of them, for $16,000. So a lot of money. So what we learned from the audit was that we, we found that there were mistakes that were costing them thousands of dollars. These issues plague accounts because Google Ads have tons of booby traps that are designed to make Google more money. As you guys all know, Google's free, right? The search platform is free, and they make most of their money from advertising. So the first one that we found was the search partner's checkbox. Uh, Google's power truly is through search intent of their search platform. People trust Google and search on Google.com with exactly what they are looking for. So like, in the example to the right of this, you can see luxury rehab. When somebody types that in, then there's luxury rehab ads that pop up. But in, inside of Google Ads, there's actually a hidden setting called search partners. It's a tiny little checkbox that's on by default, and this puts your ads on their partner sites, which are often sites you don't want to show up on. 
and all, and all of our experiences can dramatically reduce your result, results and eat up your budget, ultimately leading you sometimes to a cheaper cost per click, but less quality conversions or even less conversions as a whole. Um, and then plus, they go on low intent placements. So when you go on search partners, um, we get weird placements like this one, for example, beer100.com. And remember, this is for a luxury rehab. So somebody actually looking to get into rehab, to fight addiction, uh, depending on if it's alcohol or drugs. Um, and so our ad would come up in a search directory for Beer 100, um, your one-stop guide to beer and home brewing. So, you know, 99% of people probably on here are just looking to, you know, do some home brewing, uh, you know, have a fun little hobby. They're probably not looking for actual um, drug rehab facilities or luxury rehab facilities and actually take place in that. The next one is that we found jailbase.com. We found a lot of traffic going to these sites. You guys can see all these placements. Um, and this site is, you can actually search for people that have been arrested. And once again, 99% of these people or even more are probably not looking for luxury rehab or a rehab facility to go to. They're most likely looking for people um, that have been arrested or, or whatever the case is. Um, so they're going on these sites for that. They're not going on these sites for luxury rehab or once again, go to a facility. Um, so ultimately by eliminating this, we saw the costs go down and the conversions go up um, just because now our budgets focus directly on google.com instead of all these other partner sites. Search partners is just one example of the many ways that advertisers are losing money that they don't even know about. We know all these tricks and eliminate all of them aggressively to save you money. In Hoth PPC, we make sure we have a, literally a checklist we go through eliminating these booby traps before we even spend a dollar on your ads. So the strategy behind this one for this client was that we fix all the booby traps and eliminate search partners. We rebuilt all their campaigns using high intent keywords. So as you can see on the right, we focused on just Malibu drug rehab, um, in, inpatient drug rehab, drug rehab centers in California. So if people were searching this, we really knew that they were looking for something specific and looking for that solution. And we also focused on exact and phrase match keywords to really hone it in. Uh, so we weren't messing around with broad match or broad match modified. We started with some more expensive match types um, and more expensive high intent keywords. Plus, we create some compelling ads that will get cl uh, high click through rates and we set up high converting landing pages once again, not going to their website like they were in the past, we're going directly to a landing page. But we weren't done there yet. Uh, we found that they want a consistent lead. They want a good quality lead. One thing we really focused on in particular with this one was the quality of lead. So we added copy to both the ads and landing pages to pre-qualify prospects. You guys can see there highlighted um, insurance accepted. So they, they accepted insurance, but they didn't accept Medicare or Medicaid. So we put that right in a bullet point. I mean, right above the fold, you could see that right away. Now it wasn't highlighted like that, of course, that's just for the webinar. And we also did that in the ad copy. And then another piece was for increasing conversions. This market often didn't want to fill out a form because this is a highly personal and sensitive subject. Uh, so if you're filling this out for a family member or you're doing it for yourself, you know, a lot of times you just don't want to give out your information. So we gave the prospects the option to fill out a form or call in to the admissions office and we tracked all of it like a boss. And the results, who's ready for them? The results, we saw a massive lead increase. You guys can see there, just the conversions, 139 alone, we had a cost per conversion down to 164. So remember beforehand, we had um, conversions anywhere from 3,000 on average to 7,000 upwards to 23,000. And then afterwards, we had conversions on average from 124 all the way down to $63, which was pretty awesome um, with these systems. And now that's even taking away search partners, which typically pulls down your cost per click, which means that you spend less, but you're not getting as qualified lead. So you're not getting a good qualified lead as well as your cost per conversion goes up because you're not getting as many leads. So we were able to drive this down massively. Uh, and ultimately, we were able to scale this to 18,000 plus in ad spend and get consistent results. Um, here, you guys can see it was 110 per, per conversion for them. Once again, mix of form fills and phone calls. So ultimately, we built and scaled the lead generation machine. We brought down their lead costs from thousands to hundreds of dollars 
and their phones are ringing daily and driving at qualified leads. And one of the best parts about my job and my team's job is seeing results like this, but also seeing the testimonials. So, um, you know, they provide the best PPC campaign experience of any company we've worked with, not only in their knowledge and performance, but also with the way they work with us and keep us in the loop of everything they do at all times. All work is coordinated with our team throughout the campaign process, and they share their knowledge with us, unlike most companies that keep everything close to the best. You know, that's why we're even doing the webinar today. We are huge on being transparent here with any of our managed services here at the Hawk, especially the PBC since there's so much data. So some big takeaways, there are tons of Google booby traps and they can cost you thousands of dollars if you don't know what to look for. Even in a competitive market, there are always ways to improve results. And we don't just focus on the numbers, we focus on the quality of leads. All right, Bobby, we got any questions before we go into case study number three? We do. We got a couple here. Uh, there was one that was very specific to that one. Um, here we go. Did you make a separate landing page for each campaign uh, since used cars have many different brands to them? Oh, yeah. Um, so we focused on our main categories, and when we looked at categories, we were focused on uh, like mid-sized cars or just cars in general, we we're focused on trucks and we we're focused on SUVs. So yes, um, but we usually start off with just one landing page. And once we get that system working, then we can grow it um, and continuously optimize. Perfect. Perfect. And uh, one more from Andrew uh, at, um, how do you research high intent keywords? Uh, Beth was also curious about this. Andrew and Beth want to know about high intent keywords. Yeah, that's a great question. So high intent keywords, um, those are going to be, you know, really, we want to make sure they're not too general. So for example, with the drug and rehab center, you know, luxury rehab center or inpatient drug rehab center. So we weren't just looking at like alcohol addiction or drug addiction. Those were more general terms. If somebody was typing actually like inpatient rehab center, that meant they were looking for that or looking for at least information on that. So that's where we focus on those. Those are high intent keywords. So for the used car dealership, you know, used car dealership, used car dealership near me, um, you know, truck, used truck for sale for $10,000, more of those long tail keywords. Uh, if it was a marketing agency, marketing agency near me, uh, maybe like if you focus on a specific niche, you could do like fitness marketing agency. So really, those specific keywords that um, if somebody was looking for it or said that to you, you'd be like, yes, that's what I do. <laughs> Perfect. Yep. Thank you very much. Uh, right. One last one from Bjorn. Uh, in both of the case studies we've seen so far, which bidding strategies have worked out the best? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so really pulling, pulling, the, uh, pulling the curtain back here. We, uh, we start out with manual CPC for every single campaign. Um, we don't do automated bidding strategies. We've actually seen the cost per clicks go up, conversions go down. Now, there are some cases where we do automated bidding strategies for e-commerce or for lead generation. We always, always, always start with manual CPC. Perfect. Thank yeah. you very much. That's it for now. If we didn't get to a, a couple more, we'll, we'll save them for the uh, Q&A coming up. But we'll let you continue on here. All right, awesome. So the final uh, third case study, and once again, these slides are gonna be provided to you guys after the webinar. Uh, this is making phones ring for a local business. You know, we talked about a car dealership, we talked about a drug and rehab center, and we're about to talk about a local business here. And right away, you guys may say, well, that doesn't apply to me, I own X business, or I own Y business. You know, just take away the title, and you guys may be even in the same situation. You may have very similar business models, so think about it from that sense to make sure you're getting the most value from this and, and using different strategies when it comes to your marketing and advertising. So this case study is making phones ring for a local business. The background of them, they were a local dentist. They were running their own smart campaigns and they're bringing leads but wanting more out of the campaign as a whole. So as you guys can see, a trend here is a lot of times Either they're, you know, most, most people that come to us, they, some start brand new with PPC, uh, but a lot of times they've run their own ads in the past or they've had an agency. And with this client, they were actually running their own campaigns and they were getting leads. 
Um, and I did an audit for them and they were spending around $1,000 per month on ad spend. Um, they were receiving consistent leads for $43. So $43, only $43 for a lead for a dentist. Their conversions were a mix of directions, phone calls, and form fills. So I'll be honest, I had a little bit of a question mark with this. I said to myself, man, can we really squeeze a little bit more out of it? Well, I saw, especially since they were getting conversions for direction. So I knew that their cost per lead or cost per conversion was a little bit higher than what the data was showing, but I just had to figure out how we were going to do a little bit better than this. So I can't wait to show you guys the results for this one because at first I was a little bit taken away. I was like, can we do it? So the initial audit, the campaign was performing, but we wanted to report solely at call on calls and form fills. Remember, uh, they were focused on phone calls, map directions, and form fills. But the campaign was a smart campaign with very, very limited control. And what are smart campaigns? Because a lot of times people just set up campaigns at Google and they're just like, yeah, I have a campaign right. I have to run my own PBC campaigns. We're doing great. Well, a lot of times they run smart campaigns. Smart campaigns are the default for new ad accounts. So when you create a new ad account through Google, they always want you to set up a smart campaign. Uh, these, these campaigns and campaign types have very little control or levers to pull once we start the campaign. So I'm talking no negative keywords, no search term reports, no specific conversion settings, and much, much more. I mean, it's scary back there. Um, and as you guys can see, here's a little back end of the smart campaign. There's not really any area to click. It's more of like a dashboard. What we can see here are some search phrases where teeth implants, dentist, dental implants, teeth whitening, um, dental doctor, a lot of different ones. So, um, you know, smart campaigns, they can seem nice and simple and simple and new advertisers. I mean, you can literally set up a smart campaign in a matter of minutes because they just pull the information from your website. But you generally end up paying more when you don't have control versus standard search campaigns. And over 50% of the clients that come to us are using smart campaigns and losing because of it. So with the standard campaigns, you get much, much more control. Remember, you don't get a bid, you don't get negative keywords, you don't get to adjust your keywords, you don't get search term reports. Now with standard campaigns, which we build for everyone, we get much more control to make sure we can optimize the best. So in this one screenshot, there are over 10 areas where we can go in and start adjusting to optimize those campaigns. So after going through the audit, here's the whole strategy that we came up for this local business. Remember, it's a dentist, but it's still a local business that can be used for your local business or brick and mortar as well. Uh, so we wanted to rebuild the current campaigns by removing unqualified traffic sources. We set up proper tracking systems. We focus on those high intent emergency dental keywords. So for those uh, individuals asking for high intent keywords, this was emergency dental, emergency dentist near me, 24 seven emergency dentist. You know, if somebody was typing emergency dentist, they had pain, they needed help now. I mean, literally pain, right? They probably were just like, I can't even sleep. They were waking up in the middle of the night. And we created ad copy that commanded clicks and we set up landing pages that built that was built to turn visitors into leads. So we had our new search campaigns. And with one with our new search campaigns, we focus on one service compared to multiple services in the smart campaigns. We set up specific tracking for calls and form fills, and we drove traffic to a specific landing page around the service, and we had it dialed in with demographic and device bid adjustments. Once again, even the demographic and device bids were not even something that you could actually go in and optimize with your campaign. But you know, here we were focused on emergency dentists. We weren't focused on teeth implants or just dentists in general or anything like that. We focused solely on emergency dentists. And the results are pretty cool. Remember I was I was, you know, years of experience here and I was just kind of pulled back to see if we could even even get them a lower cost per lead for what they're currently getting because I knew a dentist is a pretty high cost per click. So initially their cost per lead was $43.41 with only a 3.85% conversion rate. After Hoth PBC, after we started optimizing some search campaigns, we had a $13 cost per lead and a 36% uh, conversion rate. So some pretty awesome results there. And we reduced their cost per lead nearly by 70%. I mean, it was pretty awesome. So just going from a smart campaign, I know somebody talked about bidding strategies earlier. Once again, that smart campaign, that's all automated bidding strategies. We start with that manual CPC. So the results, their cost per lead is below $15 a piece. 
We nearly 10x their conversion rate, and now they're getting consistent phone calls and form fills. Some big takeaways with smart campaigns can work in certain circumstances, but standard campaigns often offer much more control. By following a comprehensive strategy, you can massively reduce your costs and get more leads. So you guys may have said with these three case studies, you know, seems like we're doing the same thing, and that's exactly why. We have that strategy and that process built out of what needs to be done to make campaigns in almost any niche uh, successful. So here's what the client had to say. I'm very satisfied with the Hoff. The service is outstanding, and most importantly, my client is getting consistent results. Thank you so much for all of your help. So do you guys see how this can almost work in any niche? We get a one in the chat. Awesome, awesome. We got those flowing in. And we had automotive, we had health and wellness, we had a local dentist. But once again, even take away from that specific industry and these strategies and processes can work for your business as well. But that's not all. We've actually done this in hundreds of niches. We have a whole, over 130 clients currently to date. Um, and we've worked with web design, SEO agencies, pest control, video services, interior design, electricians, um, landscaping, auto dealerships, uh, dog trainers, massage therapists, cremation, HVAC, um, realtors, addiction rehab, movers, beauty salons. We've worked with so many different niches again and again, and this is the same strategy and process that works for all of these different niches, and we've made this successful. So uh, everyone on the webinar, who would like to actually get these results for your business or for a client of yours? Can I get a yes in the chat? Yes, 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 one, nice, awesome, awesome. Everyone would love to get results because ultimately to grow a service-based business or even a product, we need to have consistent phone calls and form fills coming in. But the biggest problem is most people don't know where to start, and PPC can be very confusing on the best approach. You can literally burn thousands of dollars in ad spend. Remember that first case study of spending almost 70000 without much ROI? Um, if you're not properly managing your campaign, and you might have been turned off by past marketing agencies. Uh, so we created the solution, and that's why I was brought in almost two years ago now, which is Hoth PPC. Hoth PPC is our done-for-you, all-in-one lead generation service. This is the best way to start generating high-quality leads from Google Ads on autopilot. You have a team dedicated to driving leads and ultimately helping you grow your business. Instead of worrying about all the hidden settings and buttons, we put together an expert team equipped with an advanced strategy to get you stellar results. So here's how it works. You join Health PPC. Once you join it, you actually we do a little bit of pre-research and put together those estimates that we spoke about earlier in an audit where we do some pre-research. We, we show you how many leads you can expect for your budget, how many clicks, cost per lead, and things like that. We set the expectations from the beginning before you even spend any money. So you have a clear idea of what to expect month after month. You get a dedicated campaign manager that are all Google Ads certified. They've gone through all of my rigorous training and my boot camp that I put them through and going through, once again, the strategic process and system that we've built. We go through onboarding. And onboarding is one of the most important pieces. It's because we get to learn about you, your business, your passion for the business, what makes your business tick, who that audience is, what that offer is going to be. And if you don't know your audience, if you don't know your avatar or your or your offer, that's okay because we help you with that. We create those compelling offers with you. We look at that market research. We go into campaign planning. We see what keywords are going to work for you. What are going to be the most profitable? Uh, which offers have worked in the past? What offers are working now currently with the market? And what are people attracted to? So we create everything from the ads, keywords, uh, landing pages. We do it all for you. We build out those high converting landing pages. So we're going to write and design high converting landing pages. These are beautiful. They match your brand and are proven to convert highly. Once again, as you guys can see, every single campaign that we discussed in the case studies today and every single one you see on all those different niches we worked with all come along with landing pages for lead generation. And then we go live and we start optimizing. This isn't a set it and forget it. We're inside of your accounts daily and we perform our strategic series of optimizations. So once again, we start with building out a campaign that we know is going to be a success from the start, and then we continuously optimize. So that's how they become this award-winning, case study driving campaign. We make sure we have transparent reporting. So every week you actually get a, um, you get a report with a dashboard and everything, 
If you want to go into Google Ads, feel free. We're open. We're transparent. We're more than happy to jump on a screen share call with you. Uh, but we send you out weekly reports, and then we do monthly reviews. Um, so we do the strategy calls. We understand. We ask you about your leads. We, we, you know, we're not just focused on paid traffic, but we're focused on lead quality, uh, what your follow-up processes are, and much, much more. So your campaign manager is not just a traffic expert. They are your lead generation expert on speed dial. You need to reach them. You can email or call us at any time. Truly all in one. So we created this to be a truly all in one Google Ads management service that goes above and beyond for your specific needs. So for everyone who stayed on this webinar, we have a special webinar one-time offer for you. As a way of saying thanks for sticking for sticking on this webinar, we're going to give you a free month of Hoth PPC when you sign up for three months. That's right, a free month of Hoth PPC. It's a $500 value. So let's talk about how we can start generating leads on demand for you and your business, gain more calls, gain more form fills daily. So if you guys are ready to learn more about Hoth PPC, you can book a call here, thehoth.com slash rock. I know Bobby will be dropping that in the chat for you guys. You guys can book your calls. Um, and once again, you guys can bring up about the special deal we have going on with the webinar. And once again, we showed you guys some case studies. We showed you some niches. But we've been getting great results and reviews, and I want to share those with you. We've had this e-commerce client. We actually reduced their cost per lead by 85%. Working with the Hawk PBC has been a real pleasure. My account manager, Carl Barley, has been very hands-on with our campaign and has made great progress with only a few months. Easy to work with quick to understand our needs and been very prompt with answering our emails and any questions we may have. Drug rehabilitation, we went over this one. They provide the best PPC campaign experience of any company we've worked with. We drove in 752 leads for the auto dealership. We drove in 1,400, 1,400 leads for a local retailer in six months. So I know right now, 2020, we're talking about these case studies and in six months, we drove them 1,400 leads. Now, for anybody out there with a who's a local retailer or just a local business, what would 1,400 leads in your local area do for your business? Just think about that for a second. Uh, we had 532% uh, ROAS for an e-commerce store. So yes, we're talking about lead generation, but we do work with a lot of e-commerce stores as well. Uh, this webinar was just all about lead generation. We had some raving reviews in e-com. So your PPC campaign has brought in more revenue than any other marketing efforts I've done in the past decade. I mean, this guy, this client has been running marketing uh, for his company for the past decade, and our PPC campaign has brought in more revenue than any other campaign he's done. Um, Hoth PPC has been fantastic. My campaign manager, Bridget, has gone above and beyond repeatedly. Working with her has been like having our own in-house PPC department. Once again, you guys have a dedicated campaign manager with Hoth PPC. You guys understand what's going on with your campaigns at all times and where we're headed, what's working, what's not working. We're very transparent about it. So I know everyone wants to see these types of results because we got a ton, a ton of people saying yes and one in the chat earlier. So book your strategy session at thehoth.com slash rock. You guys will be able to speak with the account manager and review, even learn more about PPC if it'll work for your business. Um, you know, what can work, what can not, and go from there. Because we have more of them from where that came from. We have the ultimate result here. Uh, we've worked with Amazon account lawyers, dating services, dentists, web design, hyperbaric chamber sales, hypnotists, right? That's kind of a weird one. Drug and alcohol rehab, med spa clinics. That one's very difficult to get actually approved on Google. We've worked, since we are a Google partner, we get to work with our Google rep, work with them, and understand what how we can work with Google on like med spa and those those areas those industries that have been tougher to get approved with on google uh, iphone repair this actually got banned back in 2018 once again we were able to work with um the with google to get them approved and get them running we're spending right now about fifteen thousand dollars a month with an iphone repair company in a local area they own four uh shops and we focus on iphone repair computer repair mac repair of course um and just getting those people in the door for them and booking those uh, consultations, media buying software. So actually, software, SaaS. We worked with them in the past. Oral surgeons, personal injury lawyers. Lawyers are great. We run a lot of search, call only, and remarketing ads for personal injury lawyers. Pest control, private schools, apartment finding services, scooter and motorbike rental, SEO, window tinting. It doesn't matter what niche you're in. We can make it happen. 
We've worked with, once again, hundreds of different niches, and we're working with many, many more daily. This is this is a fully updated list of what we've been working with, and we just have people coming in daily with Hoth PPC. And plans only starting at only $500 per month. That's full Hoth PPC. So not only are you getting search campaigns, you're getting call-only campaigns and remarketing campaigns. And ultimately, who is this best for? I did have to make some rules about Hoth PPC because we want to make sure that they're the best fit. And we may have another product here at the Hoth if you're not um, at this point, and that's perfectly fine. We want to help you get there uh, just as the Hoth in general. So for Hoth PPC, I have three major rules. You must be generating consistent sales. You must be able to spend $1,000 per month in ad spend for search campaigns, and you must be able to commit to three months. So if you want to start filling your sales pipeline, book a call now at thehoth.com slash rock. I know I'm looking at the form right now. Spots are filling up for the call, so book a call, guys. Um, no obligation to buy. Um, just learn more about PPC, what we can do for your guys' business or your clients. We do white label everything. Uh, once again, we have that special offer going on right now, so book a call. And uh, Bobby, let's jump into some Q&A. We do have some questions for you, Carl. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Let's uh, get into it. All right. We just got one from Jody right here. Let's start uh, from this side. How do you qualify a new client? Are there ways you determine if a potential client is not a good fit for PPC? Mm -hmm. um, what do you say? Yeah, so typically uh, PPC is, is expensive, right? There's a, that's why we require a minimum of $1,000 per month and, and just ad spend, and that goes directly to Google. Uh, just because cost per click seem to be going up, uh, but it generates you those high intent uh, leads that are looking for your solution right now. So typically a good fit, a good business is someone who has like a higher ticket item. So that could be a service-based businesses. Um, typically we see ones that don't do too well, or maybe if it's a one-off product for $50 or $30, you know, you have to make a lot of sales um, to recoup that thousand dollars plus the management fee. And now if you do have a product, we, we do work with those businesses a lot of times uh, but we have to make sure we set expectations that they're going to be getting an ROI maybe three or six months down the road because a lot of times those products, you make more money on the back end uh, and you may even break even uh, acquiring that customer. So. Perfect. A uh, couple questions about reselling. Uh, one, what is the onboarding process like for a, an agency that's reselling this? Yeah. And two, can you suggest uh, how much to upcharge your client? Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, so we pack, you know, I packed it all in with Auth PPC. Hey, you get a dedicated campaign manager. We build out the landing pages for you. Um, we build out search campaigns, tracking. I mean, just everything. So, we sell it for five hundred. Typically, resellers, I see them selling it for five. Uh, sorry, a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars even on a month to month basis. And the reason being is because we not only handle search, but remarketing the landing pages. So, if you start stacking all those up. Uh, that's at least a two to three thousand dollar service from a lot of bigger other agencies, and that we don't charge extra for. So um, that's where I usually say for pricing. In terms of white label, everything is white label. So when we request access to the ad account, it comes from a generic white label email. Um, nothing is from the Hoth. In terms of communication, um, we communicate directly with the reseller, and a lot of times our emails are are not as much jargon or anything like that, so they can send that directly over to their client. They can copy and paste that on over um, and go from there. But yeah, everything's white label, and, um, and and we try to help out our resellers as much as possible. Perfect. Um, all right. Question from Fred: Is Bing ads still relevant? Yeah, Fred, that's a great question. It really depends on your overall demographics. So uh, we've been running some Bing ads. Um, we don't typically offer it, but we've been running and testing some. And if it's an older demographic, those seem to work best. Um, but it's just Google, you can get, I, I believe the, the statistic I was looking at the other day, it's just about 90% of the internet. So like Facebook is this big piece, Bing is a big piece, but really, we can get in front of 90% of the internet just on Google. So we have enough space to play around with uh, on Google, Google Display Network, YouTube. So there's a lot of opportunities just on Google. Perfect, perfect. Uh, question from Chelsea. How do you keep your existing customers from clicking on your ads? 
Um, yeah, that's a great question. Um, so, you know, it's really, really difficult to do that. Um, there are some third party softwares out there that, you know, help with IP blocking and things of that nature. Uh, but yes, it's really difficult to do that. Now, one thing that we do is when, when our leads get sent over, we can send over the specific IP address. So if you see that the IP address keeps on clicking, we could always block out that IP address. Um, but it is a really difficult thing to do. But heck, if you're running retargeting, you want your customers to keep clicking. You want them to keep buying and buying and buying. So yeah, yeah. And I, I do see some people saying click sees. Um, yeah, click sees is a great tool as well. We've used it in the past. Um, it just, you know, once again, until you start getting that data of those people clicking, it's difficult to start it right off the bat. Perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. This is from, uh, from Joe, sorry, from, uh, Robert. How are you able to calculate potential leads, um, before starting your campaign? Yeah. So, uh, we, we review the cost per click. Um, and then with our landing pages, we have a pretty good benchmark of a conversion rate. So we go in and calculate everything for you guys to understand. We take your budget, take cost per click, average cost per click. We take the conversion rate, and then we calculate everything for you. Uh, funny enough, Jules actually wanted to know what percentage range for a click-through and conversion rate do you typically, would you say, is a strong average and low? Uh, yeah, so click through rate, it depends on the business, but anywhere from three to five percent conversion rate. Uh, we want to be right around at least 10 percent on conversion rates, um, either calls or form fills. Perfect. All righty. From Shelby, um, is there a way you have clients communicate lead quality back to you? Yeah, that's a great question. So we do our weekly reports. As we also optimize throughout the month and we do that monthly strategy call, that's when we say, all right, let's take a look at your leads. What's good? What's bad? What, you know, what makes them a good, good or bad lead? Um, you know, what kind of questions are they asking? And that's another thing that we started offering as an, as an upsell and a, as an add on here with how BBC is call tracking. We set that all up for you. So we actually listen to some phone calls with call tracking and that's been really helpful to understand the quality of leads. Because even things that you may have not picked out from your leads, we may find as an advertiser, well, we could add that as a negative keyword. We could add that in the ad copy, optimize your landing page. There's a lot of different things. Once we get this first month batch of leads come back, um, we can optimize consistently. Perfect. Uh, Gustavo has a question. Um, do you recommend using smart campaigns? What's your general take here, Carl? Uh, I do not recommend using smart campaigns at all. We have seen success with e-commerce smart campaigns, uh, but for lead generation, I do not recommend it because you lose all control over your campaign. If it's more work to do a standard campaign, um, you know, you can burn more money, but I don't see results uh, typically coming in as well with smart campaigns. Okay, moving on to Robert. Uh, can you work with spy food data? You ever work with spy food, Carl? Yeah, so it's just like another Ahrefs or SEMrush. Um, you know, we've had clients send it over to us. We typically work with SEMrush or Ahrefs. Um, we're not using spy food right now. I was actually testing out the platform a few weeks ago. Um, they've been around for quite a few years. And, um, yeah, you can definitely send that data over to us and we can take a look at it. Perfect. Uh, Kara had a question. What about B2B SaaS? Uh, can these strategies we talked about today be applicable to that industry? She says we have used a lot of agencies in the past and have gotten little to no results. Yeah, SaaS is difficult. It's a, it's a challenge. I'll be the first one to admit that. Um, and the, the challenging part is not always usually your, usually your keywords. It usually is your copy and your offer. Um, it's usually on the conversion side of things. And the reason I say the offer is because sometimes people just want like consultation booked with SaaS, uh, but a lot of times people want to kind of check the product out first. So booking a demo or just, a or, you know, opting in for that demo, like an on-demand demo um, is usually a good offer that we see, or maybe even opting in for a PDF or a lead magnet of sorts first 
Um, and then we bring them to the next stage of booking and consultation. So uh, with them, we got to pull it back a little bit more compared to like, if we looked at like a, a dentist or a roofer where it's like book now an estimate or get your free estimate. Now, you know, we got to pull it back a little bit more, have a little less resistance when it comes to SaaS because a lot of times user want it, users want to check the product out. Perfect. Uh, there are quite a few people that were curious about what a landing page software um, you use and also just what's some of your favorites? Oh, some of my favorites. So I used to be a big <laughs> funnels guy back before the Hoth. Uh, I know we use the ClickFunnels internally for the Hoth. Um, but to scale with to scale PBC and the PBC product here at the Hoth, we actually had to build our own landing page builder. Um, and fortunately, we have the devs and everything help us with that. So we built our own landing page builder internally. Um, that's how we build them for our clients. But um, I'm a big fan of ClickFunnels, um, and I've been following them and, and working with their software for, for quite a few years now. So um, that, or we internally, we use uh, Elementor with WordPress. Perfect. Uh, question from Scott Bender. He, he's wanting to know, can you repeat how you tracked the phone calls in the campaign? I think that might have been about uh, case study number two or one. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so with the phone calls, we track them. If somebody is on the web, if somebody's on the landing page, they can click on it and that's how we track it. Or we do now offer third party tracking so they can listen to call recording. So if somebody dials it on their phone or clicks on the actual, um, clicks on the phone number and then dials through their phone or their desktop, that'll be recorded. And then in the call extensions with Google ads, we can track that. Um, through conversion. So we're able to track the call extensions as well as on the landing pages. Perfect. Um, question about landing pages. Um, Jason wants to know if the customer wants to buy the landing page uh, we have created, are they able to? Uh, that's a great question. Unfortunately, uh, we do not sell the landing pages or there's no ownership of the landing pages. We build them on our system. Um, and the reason we build them on our system is because we set up tracking for everyone. It's very difficult to track every single thing on a website because you can go to multiple places. Um, we optimize, so making sure we're optimizing those headlines, those call to action buttons, changing out offers. We can make those edits for you very quickly. And typically from somebody purchasing, we get those campaigns live within seven business days. Perfect. And uh, one more on the, in the realm of landing pages. Does the Hoth create form fills on the landing pages? Uh, yeah, so we, we, we allow people to opt in to a form fill, and we're going to, on that onboarding call, we actually focus on, you know, what form fills would you like. Uh, we give our recommendations, and then, of course, phone calls are another big way, uh, just so we have the least resistant on that landing page to capture those conversions. Yeah, no distractions, no nav bar, no ways to click away, just that yep. one main action there. Yep. Actually, there were so many questions about landing pages. I'll put a quick link in uh, the chat here on what one of our example landing pages looks like. You can check that out, too. Uh, don't forget, if you haven't booked your strategy call yet, uh, go ahead and do that now. I see some spots dwindling down here. Um, again, this can be if you just have some questions, if you want to learn about PPC, but if you want to learn how this applies to your business, hop on a call. We'll be happy to talk with you. All right, from Andrew, do you handle all TCPA compliance setup legal disclaimers on landing pages? Andrew, those are some pretty big words. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we we leave that all up to the client. If there's disclaimers, specifically with lawyers, we have a lot of disclaimers. That is all on the uh, on the client to provide us, um, and then and then we go from there. Now, privacy policy, terms of service. Um, we, we grab those from the client as well. So all the legal, um, you know, documents and disclaimers, that's all up to the client. Perfect. Brian wants to know, I think he posted this when we were talking about call tracking a little bit ago. What call tracking system do you recommend? He likes the idea of listening to the calls uh, to determine call quality and lead quality. Yep. So we actually have uh, partnered with CallRail. To, to do that, so we integrate that with the with Hoth PPC campaigns, and that allows us to listen to those call recordings um, and and actually review that with the client, and you know get a good understanding of you know how are how are the clients following up 
uh, the quality of leads, and so on and so forth. And Brian, we uh, we actually just wrote an article about uh, call tracking uh, a week or so ago. I actually just sent that in the chat and tagged in. You can take a look there if you want to learn more. All right, let's jump in. We got a, a few questions left. If you have any more, go ahead and uh, throw them in the chat there. Uh, from Kamal, which bidding strategy should be used for e-commerce businesses in the beginning? Uh, yeah, so we typically set up a standard campaign to start with for e-commerce, and uh, we start with manual CPC once again. Uh, that way we just have a lot of control over each product, how much we're bidding on each product, because each product has different margins typically. All right. Uh, from Mayor, uh, did you add uh, exact and phrase match keywords in the same ad group? Is it advisable to add all match types in one ad group? Um, I'm more focused not on the match types for each ad group. I'm focused on how tight of keywords that ad group has. So if you know maybe it's um, the ad group's lead generation, it would just be all about lead generation in the ad group. It would be like lead, lead generation company, lead generation agency, lead generation services, things like that not just lead generation, but um, that one topic would just be about lead generation, say services or agency. Um, and then yes, we would have phrase and exact match to begin with. Perfect. All right, moving on here. We got a few more. Uh, what recommendations does the Hoth give regarding the lead follow-up process? This is from Haley. Yeah, uh, Haley, that's a great question. So. Um, we figure out, you know, first, what is the lead follow-up process? So, and we figure out also, we ask, you know, what is the problem with the lead? So is, are they not coming to meetings? Are they not closing? Um, so we typically, you know, recommend it's on a case by case basis of what you guys should do for follow-up. Some people just have an autoresponder, some people, you know, text, call, email, um, their leads. So it's just really a case by case basis. Um, but we do kind of break it down once again on a uh, specific case. Perfect. There's a, uh, a question from, uh, I believe it was Ken in here, on uh, the pricing tiers based on how much uh, of the monthly budget they have to spend. Um, Ken, I'm going to drop in, this is for anyone else who wants to see it, the uh, link to our sales page. There's a great pricing section at the bottom down there. We have made a... Uh, Fun little slider bar. You can move it along for whatever, how much you want to spend a month, and uh, the monthly budget management fee, I should say, will change accordingly. So you can go check that out. Yeah, and and just as a, a lot of people fall into those first two tiers, so each tier covers up to five thousand in ad spend, meaning you know you you have a lot of room to grow as a as a business um, with ad spend, and it doesn't always necessarily mean you have to you know we ding you extra for extra management or anything. That's why we do flat fee tiers. All right. From Brian, as an additional service to my B2B clients that have been spending less than $1,000 a month, can I combine them in one $500 a month plan for helping or just wait until they get bigger? Uh, let's see. Yeah, um, it, it really depends on the on the business. B two B is tough, and it's pretty expensive to acquire customers. You know, you guys may be in a good situation to maybe just do remarketing right now, which is would start to two fifty, and we only require two hundred fifty in ad spend um, to go with. Um, but yeah, so it just depends on the situation, Brian. If you want to reach out, I'll be more than happy to. Um, you can book a call with us, and we can go over that current situation. All right, Bill, we're getting to you. Sorry for the delay here, buddy. We, he wants to know what is the percentage of success with improving ROI for clients? We kind of talked about this earlier in the webinar. Uh, yeah. maybe, maybe you weren't on for that yet, Bill, but we'll get to it again here. Why don't you take it away, Carl? Yeah, so in terms of ROI, you know, that's one thing that, you know, we are focused on the traffic and getting the leads. Um, you know, in some businesses, it's, I'll, let, I'll say this, I would say probably 50 to 75% of businesses, you know, really don't even have those numbers. They just understand how many leads they're getting um, and they don't have a proper CRM or, or item set up. So, um, you know, that's one thing that we kind of are in the dark about when it comes to getting that ROI. 
um, and figuring out, you know, how many leads they're getting. And then we kind of go in that conversation. So, you know, it's really tough to tough to say in terms of the percentage. Um, but, you know, I would love to, if you want to book a call, Bill, I'd love to chat with you in terms of maybe specific industries. I can give you specific results uh, on those industries or successes we've had in the past. Perfect. I love it. Go yeah. ahead, book a call. We can take a deep dive with you with, with anything yeah. you want to uh, you want answers to. Yeah, and, and and just like as we're talking today, that's exactly how you know the me and the myself and the rest of the team we we talk with you guys he, just here in the Hoth in general, very transparent about everything. And, you know, just no BS. We want to make sure, you know, you know, if I had a real answer or a direct percentage, I would give that to you. Uh, but I just don't. And uh, I want to make sure everyone um, gets the correct answers and, and we'll just dive into each situation as they come. All right. Getting down to the end here. If you have any more, throw them in there. I think we have uh, two or three left here. Uh, right. Lucas wants to know, do you ever work with clients who have Google uh, not for nonprofit accounts? Uh, yeah, so we actually work with a, a handful of nonprofit accounts, and we've managed up to ten thousand in ad spend for nonprofits. The one thing that uh, with nonprofits, they have a lot of limitations. Uh, we can just do search. We can only spend two two dollars and fifty cents per click, um, and so you know that there's a lot of limitations. But yes, we have. Perfect. All right, and one last one from Fred for blogs that have affiliates. For generating income, do I need to build landing pages for the products I'm affiliating with? That's a good question, Fred. Um, so yeah, that that is, I would say, out of our typical process or strategy with Hoth PBC. Um, but if you're running directly to the blogs, and then maybe you have like just I don't know what type of products you're an affiliate for, but let's say it's just Amazon because a lot of people do that. Um, I would say just running it directly to that specific blog content and making sure that content is focused on selling and showing the benefits of that product. Perfect. Well, I think that is it. Thank you for uh, getting through all those questions. I know we went rapid fire at you there, Carl. Yeah. Um, but that is it. I think we're, we've cleared the questions. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us on this. Now sunny afternoon here in Florida. <laughs> uh, I appreciate you guys all. We had a great, great amount of attendees hang out with us. And uh, for the last hour, the slides will be available. Remember, book a call, um, you know, chat about PPC, what you guys are currently doing, you know, what you guys are looking to do. Um, really start painting some pictures for 2021. I know, you know, right now in Q4, e-commerce is really big. Um, but for lead generation, especially service-based, we're going to be ramping back up in 2021 and getting those jobs for you guys and, and leads coming in the door. So um, start planning now um, and, and get your business out there. I would definitely recommend getting the business out there as soon as possible and just getting your name in front of people, even if that's just with remarketing or another type of advertising uh, like search or calls. Well, perfect. Well, everyone, have a great rest of your uh, Thursday, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Awesome. See you guys.